your brain will recognize even the simplest things. So it's okay if you start out with those stick figures and those uh, basic shapes. And that's why I always want to teach people illustration before they even start sketchnoting because that's the big barrier for most people. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's interview, I'm talking to Emily Mills, who is walking us through how to do sketch noting, even if you think you can't draw, which is super exciting because I think a lot of people are turned off of sketch noting, or they see it and they think it's beautiful, but they could never do it because they can't draw. I'm in that boat. I don't know if you are too, but in this lesson, Emily is really breaking it down for us, explaining why you don't have to be an amazing drawer, is that even a word, artist? <laughs> to be able to do amazing sketch notes and how you can start doing them yourself. So let's jump right into the lesson. Emily, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I've already told people in the introduction what we're gonna be talking about and I, like selfishly, I'm really excited to learn about this from you because I have always been a big fan of sketch noting, but before we get into all of that, I want you to tell people who you are, what you do, where you come from and all those fun things. Yeah, so my name is Emily Mills, and I'm a freelance illustrator. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and the thing I'm known for most is something called sketchnoting, which is, or visual note-taking. It's drawing uh, pictures and writing words and putting them together so that you can create sort of like a visual map or like a visual memento of information that's happening. And so the whole purpose of that is, one, that it looks cool, but two, also that it helps you retain that information. I was just talking to somebody about that yesterday, about how she had this sort of not like a not like a photographic memory but a memory where she was always doodling in school and stuff when she was a kid yeah. and every time she'd go to take the test in school like if she drew that same leaf that she drew when she was learning it she could remember what the teacher was saying and stuff is that how it all kind of clicks for you too yeah i can look back on past pieces that i created even just graphic design pieces and i'm like oh i was listening to that podcast when i did that part so it's really interesting how the brain really connects kinesthetic movement and visual stuff all together so did you get into that because you were artistic and then you realized that it had the memory component or did you start doing it for your memory component and yeah, just make yourself into artistic it. i got it um, I got into it just very accidentally. Um, I happened to do a whiteboard video for a friend who just needed someone who could draw. And from the whiteboard video, then a company contacted me and said, hey, we do this. Do you want to come work for us? And from then it was just training and learning and going to workshops and learning from YouTube videos and books and just diving headfirst. And so, I mean, I think that it's always so cool to hear about people's businesses and stuff and like you do this for a living so can you explain to people what that kind of looks like like what what does your job look like as a professional sketch noter right so a lot of times I actually don't do the live events anymore just because the travel was too much but um what I would do is fly or drive to these live events like conferences, meetings, brainstorming sessions, um even just internal meetings that were just about boring stuff and I would live sketch what was happening in the room so I was sort of like a silent observer and that way whenever the meeting was over they had a visual representation of what was happening during the meeting and so um, for big conferences it's really fun because all the attendees leave the room and as they're leaving they see this giant mural of what they just heard and it really helps those visual people in the audience because they can take a picture of it and keep those notes for themselves. It's just so, and it's just so fun to look at. Like, even if you don't care at all about what that talk was about, I would still oh, take sure. a picture anyway. I feel like so many people would take a picture just so they could have it to look at it. And I know that you're probably going to talk about this in your lesson, but like for, for people who are thinking about, you know, I would love to do that, or I think I would love to do sketch noting, but I can't draw. Like, where would you tell people to start? Because I think that as a whole, it looks amazing, but you don't actually have to be like an amazing illustrator to be able to sketch note, right? Right. So with sketch noting, like it's all about creating something that's memorable and recognizable. And when it comes to illustration, we all know that a box and a triangle is a house. And we all know that a circle with two triangles on top is a cat. And so the baseline is like, really low and so yeah it's really cool if you're an illustrator and you can illustrate cool things in your sketch notes but your brain will recognize even the simplest things so it's okay if you start out with those stick figures and those uh, basic shapes and that's why I always want to teach people illustration before they even start sketch noting because that's the big barrier for most people yeah 
I love that. Okay, well, I, I'm excited to see how this goes. So I want to get my face off here and let you do your lesson, um, unless you have anything else that you needed to say no, before we get it. started. Okay, perfect. So before we get started with any kind of practice, I want to share a little bit about the different kinds of sketch notes. And the first one is called lecture based. And that's where you're going to something like a conference or a meeting and you're hearing information that's not as familiar to you. Um, you're taking everything in live in real time because you're in the audience. And this is a little bit harder to start out with because there's a lot of factors that you're out of control with. And so we're going to start learning the other kind of sketch noting, which is experience based. Um, and this is something that you're not taking live in real time at an event or at a meeting. This is something you're doing personally on your own time. And the information isn't coming from an outside source like someone on stage, it's coming from your own memories or creativity. So we're gonna learn how to do a experience-based sketch note today. Now there's a couple skills that you wanna learn before you just start diving into sketch noting. And the first is listening. And we all think we know how to listen, but we really are not good at it. Um, if you've ever been to lunch with somebody and they're talking and then they ask you a question and, and then you realize you haven't actually been listening, you've been zoning out or thinking about what you're going to order, um, that's the kind of listening that is pretty much our default. Whereas with sketchnote listening, you really want to listen to the key points, the big ideas. Um, you're, you want to do the high level overview, not just every single nitty gritty detail. So for experience based sketch notes, that's a lot easier. There's a lot less pressure. You just have to listen to your own memories rather than someone on stage. The second skill that you need is writing. And I would guess that most people watching this have this like down pat, like you're a calligrapher, you've got hand lettering experience, you're doing chalkboards, um, whatever that experience looks like, uh, handwriting is really important, whether it's lettering or just writing words like you normally would in a journal. Uh, writing is important because sketch notes are images and illustrations together. It's not just drawing, it's not just writing, it's pairing those words and images together for something that's really dynamic, that's really memorable, and it's going to help you retain that information a lot later. So. Sketch notes look cool, but they actually have a scientific purpose of helping you remember things. So the next skill that you want to learn is drawing. And this is the skill that gets a lot of people caught up. They're just not really sure where to start. It seems really intimidating. Um, almost everyone who talks to me about drawing just comes up to me and says, I can't draw, I can't even draw a stick figure. And that's like the biggest lie I think people tell themselves is that they can't draw. Uh, the reality is that everyone can draw, you just might not be Michelangelo. So when it comes to sketch note drawing, uh, you'll notice these little simple drawings that I've done here to show um, each skill, they are really basic. And that's what sketch notes is all about. Like you're not trying to be the best illustrator here, you're just trying to get the idea across. And so, when it comes to drawing, the biggest thing I want you to remember is memorable over masterpiece. And all that means is you're creating art that someone can remember rather than something that someone remembers the details of. So if you've ever went, if you've ever gone to an art museum and you see a painting, you remember that you saw a painting of a girl in a field and it was a blue sky, a cloudy day, but you don't remember every single brush stroke and that's kind of the idea with sketch notes like you don't need to remember all the details of the drawing you just need to remember the subject matter of the drawing so when it comes to drawing if you want to draw a house a box and a triangle is perfect like this is your baseline the bar is very low if you want to draw a person draw a stick figure so we're going for these recognizable images rather than something that is beautiful. It's okay if you're a really good illustrator and you're totally allowed to create the best illustrations you can, but the second thing I want you to remember is recognizable over real realistic. So if you wanted to draw a hand, I would just encourage you to draw sticks because we can all recognize that as a hand and you don't need to create this 
fancy thing that takes a really long time to draw. Like, it's okay if you can do good drawings quickly, but again, we're going with simple, not super complicated. One of the first lessons I want to teach today is basic drawing, and we're starting really slow. So there's seven basic building blocks of every single drawing. Everything you can draw can be distilled down into these shapes, and those are a dot, a straight line, a crooked line, a curvy line, a circle, a triangle, and a square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can draw anything in the world with these seven things. There's a couple rules. Um, the first rule is that you can use as many or as few of these design elements as you want. Um, the fewer, the easier, uh, the more complicated, the more you're probably going to be using. The second rule is that you can rearrange, uh, rotate, reposition, stretch any of these elements into whatever shape you need. So if I were to draw, let's say, a car, technically I'm going to start with the square, but I'm going to stretch it out a little bit more. And then instead of using the entire circle, I'm just going to use half circles. So it might not be the prettiest car in the world, but it's pretty basic. And most people would agree that this is recognizable as a car. And maybe it would have been better if I had stretched it out and done the front views. So here's the headlights. Here's the tires. So let's walk through a couple examples of drawing anything with these seven building blocks. Um, one example that I always teach people is to think of like 10 objects that you use every day. So for me, um, that would be a teacup. And so here's my stretched out circle. And then I'm going to draw a box, or rather two straight lines. It could be a box. And then I'm repeating that curved line right here on the bottom. And then I'm using two half circles to create the handle and then some wavy lines and some straight lines for the details, the steam and the reflection. Um, another object I use every day is a pen, I'm using one right now. So just create a long elongated box, a triangle and a half circle and then some straight lines and now we have a pen. So I just want to share how these seven building blocks, if you break down every single thing in the world, you can break it down into those seven building blocks. So um, it's easy to draw if you break it down into these simple things. So I think a couple things that people always say that they struggle drawing. The first is hands. So I mentioned that earlier. I'll just give you a couple easy way of drawing hands. Uh, the first is what I call the stick hand and it's draw a thumb, one straight line and then draw three or four curved lines out the other direction. And there's your hand. And you can do a different variations depending on what the person's doing. So maybe they're holding their fist down and showing the number one. You can just make curved lines for the other fingers and stick the first one up. Uh, another way to draw a hand is to draw a box and then draw four lines out of the top and then one off to the side. And this is easy if you're doing stick figures because you're already using lines. And then a couple quick things about drawing hands is if you look at them, the fingers are not straight. They're all on a curve. And then it's the same with where they connect on the hand. This isn't really a box. It's more like a box that's really puffed out. And then the thumb does connect at the bottom of the box but at the same time, it's more of an angle than it is actually sticking out here. And so the fingers have that same arc at the top. And that hand looks a little bit more realistic just because of those a couple rules, the arc of where the fingers connect, the arc of the fingers on top, and then the thumb not coming out from the bottom, but more coming out at the side at an angle. Um, a couple other things that people 
always want to draw are people and stick figures are okay and there's actually a lot of different ways to draw a stick figure. Uh, the first I would say is just the normal stick figure with a circle and some straight lines. And then another way to draw a stick figure is what I would call the A person. All you do is you draw the letter A, capital, and then you add a circle on top, and then some arms connecting at the point. And then there's the oval person, which is just drawing a bunch of circles for the hands and feet and body, and then connecting it with lines. And then the last one I would teach is a star person. So you can do that two different ways. You can literally draw a star and then just put a happy face at the top. You could put hands and feet on if you want to. Or you can just use the star-like qualities of hands and feet coming out at angles. So we have our stick person, our A person, our oval person, and star person. So these are just different ways that you can draw people in your sketch notes very quickly and very easily. And then lastly, I'm sure a lot of calligraphers are familiar with these, but something what I call containers and connectors. So if you're writing information, maybe it's a side note in your sketch notes, um, maybe you wanna separate that. You can draw a box around it, but boxes are kind of boring, so Make your container a little bit more creative just by adding a frame. Um, and you can be as creative as you want with these containers. So if your text is here, there are limitless possibilities. You do want to use containers to separate com information that's maybe different from the flow or something that stands out like a really cool quote or a really big idea. Um, and you can use any kind of line or shape to do this. Um, I'm just doing quick messy versions here, but I hope you get the idea of containers and connectors. So uh, I think my other favorite kind of container is to draw a box and then draw some nails in the top like it's nailed to the page as an extra thing. And then I'd say one more that's kind of simple is just draw the box at an angle like it's a sticky note and then can create a shadow underneath and that just helps it pop off the page more than if it was just flat. And then with connectors, when you're reading sketch notes, you need to tell people where to read next. So let me show you an example. All right, so here's some sketch notes from TEDx Nashville last year. Um, visual notes can be really overwhelming to people that haven't seen them before and it's so visually overwhelming that they don't really know where to start or where to go. We all know that we read top to bottom, left to right, so go with that. So when you're creating a sketch note, always create a really big header that's very clear about what people are going to be reading, and then help people with connectors. So here's a connector. This is a dotted line, and I always just use a dotted line in my sketch notes to show people, hey, this is where you're going. Like, you're going to go on a little journey here, but I'm going to show you where to go next because just looking at this is somewhat overwhelming at first. So connectors can be dotted lines, they can be arrows. Um, I even say that numbering is a connector because people know to follow a list. And so that's just one example of how to use connectors. So when it comes to creating your own sketch note, I would recommend everyone start out really small. Even if you're used to working in a large scale format, um, it can be intimidating to start sketchnoting on a large format because it's just a very different kind of work. So start small and I'm just using a little field notes notebook. The paper is kind of thin and it bleeds through but it works in a pinch when you're just practicing. Uh, the tools I'm going to use are a sketch one which is a German Neuland marker. It's pretty similar to a micron. It's pigment ink and then I have three colored Tombow dual brush pens and two different grays, a dark gray and a light gray. So when we're starting out your experience-based sketch note, like I said, you want to have a header. I'm going to do my experience-based sketch note on a trip that I recently took to Colorado. So your header can be as simple or complicated as you want it to be, hand lettered, handwritten, whatever, it's up to you. 
So now that I have my header, I'm going to create kind of a visual record of what happened on my trip to Colorado. Um, the first thing I want to do is kind of think about a layout. So there's a lot of different ways you can do a layout. Um, but keeping in mind, people read top to bottom, left to right. I'm going to follow something that's pretty intuitive just on its own. Like I'm not going to start over here in the bottom right corner and then work all my way up here. Like that's just not really helpful. So I'm going to follow a layout that maybe does like a zigzag pattern or just straight top to bottom. And then I'm actually going to go across the bottom and then work my way up and end here at the top. So sometimes that's not as intuitive to read. A lot of people get to the bottom and then they just go straight to the top of the next page. And that just all depends on your connectors. So if you have a really good connector that spans the pages like, hey, here's some information here, and then there's some more over here, and there's a really obvious arrow, people will follow it, even though they know for every other book or notebook that they've had, they're going to stop here and then go to the top. So it's really just up to, up to you and your preference. Sometimes I'll go across the bottom of the page and end at the top. Sometimes I'll stop here and then go to the top. It's just up to you. So now that you've maybe thought about your layout, you want to think about some consistency. So like I said, visual notes can be really overwhelming. And one thing you really need to do with um, making your sketch note easy to read is to have some consistency in hierarchy. So um, what that could look like is having consistent headers. So labeling different sections of your sketch notes. It could mean you have a consistent drawn character throughout and um, also think about the size that you're writing. So is everything really tiny or is it really big? Just thinking about the different ways that you're writing and drawing are going to help the reader establish some hierarchy and some uh, interpreting whether it's important or not important or just kind of fluff details. So with experience-based sketchnote, if it's just for you, I guess at the end of the day it doesn't really matter, but I love showing anything that I create to people. And so I'm always thinking about the audience and what they're thinking about it, whether it's easy for them to understand. Next, I'm gonna be creating this sketch note. Um, this was a work trip, so I'm gonna have a couple different sections about the places we went, the people we saw, um, just the activities we did while we're in Colorado. So now that I've finished the bulk of the sketch notes, now we enter what I call the refining period. And that's when your sketch note is done, but you can make it look a little bit better. So with refining, there's a couple things that I do. First is go through and make sure that I spelled things correctly and I didn't mess up. Um, one big question that I get a lot is, what happens if you mess up? You always do this in pen. What if you misspell something? What if you um, just get something wrong? And the beauty of sketch notes is that it's more personal and it's just hand done and mistakes are going to happen. So here's one mistake I made actually. I just wasn't thinking straight and this was supposed to be uh, Lyft or Uber and I wrote rental car twice. So, you know, it's just not the end of the world if you mess up. Um, there are a couple things you can do if you mess up. One is just use whiteout and um, that's probably the simplest thing. The other trick is to use these white jelly roll pens as whiteout. So if I really wanted to get rid of um, an extra letter or just edit something really tiny, I can write over that with this white jelly roll. Uh, the next thing, once you've gone through and checked for errors or spelling, is to help the reader understand where to go. So do you have those connectors? Do you need to add any more connectors or containers to make it easier to read? So just reading this from a an outside perspective. It's a little overwhelming because everything is black and white, one tone, two tone. And so I want to help the reader understand where to go even more. So I have these consistent headers, which are great, and I have this um, dotted line, which is great, but I think I can help the reader really know where to go with um, what I call a guiding shape. And that's just 
basically blocking out all the white space. So a guiding shape can be straight, it can be curvy, it could be just using a color or a gray marker, I could use stippling. Um, what I like to do is actually create a cloud shape and just block out that white space. So here's how you do that. So the flow is this way, and so I want to kind of block out and create a road where I want the person to look. And it's okay if you go off the edge. So there's one, and I'll just leave it along the bottom. That looks pretty good. I might actually add a little cloud shape there. And I really want to separate this side from this side. The crease helps, but there's a way to just help the reader know that this content is separate. If I just separate it with these guiding shapes. There we go. And I'll just create more little bubbles here. So it's a little rough, but it works. blocking out that white space here, and then just adding a little corner in. So I hope you can kind of see that there's this cloud that's a U shape. And to further, further help the viewer understand where to go, I'm gonna just create lines in the negative space. And that will help the viewer know, you don't need to look there, just ignore it. And this also creates contrast. And the higher the contrast in the sketch note, the more people like it. It's just I guess that's what I've found on Instagram is the higher contrast notes I have, the more likes they get, the more people think it looks cool, um, the more it just jumps off the page. All right, so now that I've blocked out all of the negative space or the white space, now it's a little bit easier to read. You can tell that it's a U-shape top to bottom. And now that there are lines, I'm probably not gonna cross over from left to right unless um, I see that there's a break in the line like there is here. So now that I've done all of my black line, now that's when I go through with my grays. So the Tombow dual brush pens, um, you can pick whichever grays you like. I'm using N95 and N65. And I start dark to light. So what I do next is kind of outline the lines I just made and create a shadow. And just a really thin line kind of makes the cloud look like it's casting a shadow on the space behind it. And I don't think I want my darks anywhere else, so I'm done with that one. And now I'll go back with my light one and just fill in those negative space areas. Here, so now it's very evident that um, this, the content is really jumping off the page. Uh, before I just put this gray marker away, this is really helpful for adding extra shadows that aren't really in your face. So what I'll do is actually I'll outline this dotted line and highlighting the dotted line kind of shows people that, hey, there's a road and you should follow it and it looks consistent. So highlighting your connectors uh, using a consistent color or in this case, a shade of gray is really helpful for people. And then I'm also gonna add a shadow just on the underside of all these ribbons the ribbon headers. There. So I might actually come back with the gray again, but for now I'm gonna put it to the side. And now comes the fun part, the color. So I picked um, Colorado flag colors for this. And I just go through one color at a time. Um, I feel like opening and closing markers constantly, like doing red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, the whole way through is just not a very efficient way to do it. So what I'll do is do all red, and then all yellow, then all blue. And then inevitably there's something I missed and I'll go back, but for the most part, I'm not sitting there uncapping and recapping markers for a long time. So red is really bright and I wanna use it pretty sparingly. There's probably just a few areas where I'm gonna use it. Uh, the thing with color and sketch notes is that, yes, you're kind of creating a coloring book, comic, cartoon, graphic novel look, but it doesn't mean that it needs to be colored like one. Color should be more of a highlight rather than a filler. So when you're using color, use it sparingly. I almost never use more than three or four colors because after that it just looks overwhelming. All right, I think that's actually all I'm gonna do for the red. I'll come back through with yellow.
And if you're not familiar with Tombows, they have dual points. I almost always use the brush pen tip, but if you need to get in a little tiny area, the, the round nib is really helpful too. So I want these headers to really stand out, so I'm gonna make these all yellow. So one thing with coloring is you'll notice that I'm fine putting a yellow marker over this black, and that's because I use a pigment marker, and pigment doesn't really interact with the Tombows as much as, say, a water-based paint would. So if I use a black Tombow with a yellow Tombow, they are definitely going to bleed, but this is a pigment marker and it's stuck in the page and it's not really going anywhere. There's a little bleed, but not much, and it really doesn't affect that much of what I'm doing. So. Uh, if you're ever going to be doing sketch notes, I always recommend using pigment or permanent ink instead of something that's water-based. Gel is also really good. Um, it creates kind of like this hard cast shell and the ink doesn't really bleed, but there is some bleed over like with most tools. And last I'm going to do blue. Just going to create little halos behind all these people. Help them stand out a little bit. Put little circles behind these bullet points to help them stand out a little more. All right. My rental truck was blue. It was really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and color that blue so I can remember that little detail. Um, and these are actually the Southwest colors too. So I could color the plane the Southwest colors, but at that point it's sort of like becoming a coloring book and you don't need to be accurate with your colors. Um, so now I'm just going to go back in with gray and just add in a couple details. All right, so this is just a really basic experience-based sketch note. It's got um, minimal color, just enough to pop out of the page. It's got consistent headers. And another thing I want to mention with the sketch notes is that these are not exhaustive. Like you can be detailed, but when it comes to sketch noting, you're going for big ideas, you're going for highlights, you're going for the most memorable things that you want to keep track of. Um, you don't need to include really nitty gritty details like schedules or timetables or anything like that. Like these are sort of like a visual journal. So you wouldn't want to remember what time you left the house and how long the drive was. Um, you just want to remember the important things like um, we had really good conversations on the drive or something like that. So when it comes to your um, sketch notes, whether you're doing experience-based or lecture-based, they both need to be really focused on the big ideas and not the nitty-gritty details. So there's an example. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Again, I would encourage you to start small if you're going to start at all. And then just incorporate whatever you're used to. So if you're a calligrapher, um, put calligraphy in there. I'm not a calligrapher, so I never include calligraphy, but I'm learning. Um, if you're an illustrator, draw really good pictures. And if you're not really confident in sketching at all, like you don't have to show people, you can just do it for yourself. Yes. I love that last thing you said about doing it for yourself. Cause I think that so many people would stop and like me included for sure. I've done this where you start drawing and then you're like, Oh my God, this doesn't look good. And then you start erasing or like you start drawing and you're like, ah, oh, this doesn't look good. And you rip the page out. Or you're like, I can't finish this drawing because I screwed up right at the start and I'm never going to want to show it to anybody. But like, you don't have to show it to anybody. The whole point of the sketch noting is to do it for yourself, for your memory and for like, you know, a visual reference later. I love that right. so much. Yeah. yeah. But if you do decide to show it, the cool thing is that if you post every single one you do on say Instagram or Facebook or wherever, you have a visual timeline of your progress. So I can scroll back in my Instagram and see my very first sketch note. It's on there and it's horrible. And so it's really cool to see how much I've grown in just four years of sketch noting too. So absolutely. That's a really cool thing to do just for yourself. Well, and even if you don't share it on Instagram, just having them in your journal and going back, like, do you have journals that you can show us? Yeah. So I have one here from, uh, actually, I think this was from, I always put the timeline in the front. This is from 2018. So like the first ones in here are from Craft and Commerce. So there's oh, yes. talk. Um, that's actually where Becca and I met was Craft and Commerce. And there's just like every single page in these journals is either notes from sessions or it's um, sketch notes from conferences and church. That's a drawing meetup we did at Craft and Commerce. And 
I like to use different colors and experiments. Sometimes I don't even actually color them in and like finish them. It's just the plain pen because I did it for myself and not to show on Instagram. Um, but just like I have 11 of these notebooks that are just chock full of sketch notes. And it's really fun for me to be able to flip through and look at all the stuff that I've learned over the past year. Well, I think that's really encouraging for people that you didn't study illustration and that you can just do this. Like you're a creative person and you learned along the way. And so I think that's like a, a great thing for people to hear if they actually want to get into this. But I know that some of my students would want like a resource to help them learn how to maybe do illustration better. And a lot of them, like you said, in your lesson can do calligraphy, can do lettering. And so that part's probably going to be pretty good in their in their journals, but like, yeah. let's say they, they want to improve their illustration. Do you have any resources off the top of your head that would help people with that? Um, well, there's always my book. There's a section in there on just really basic drawing. It's called the art of visual note taking. And then I have a free intro or basic drawing for beginners class on teachable. So it's um, sketchnoteacademy.com and it's a free course. It's evergreen. So it's always open for enrollment. And there's, I think four or five different worksheets in there that you can download to help you just practice those basic drawing things. I love that. I didn't even mean to throw that to you for all of your resources, but it's so much better that they're coming from you. So that's awesome. So, okay. So I'll put all of those links down below for people, but um, if people want to learn more about you, see what you're up to, where can they find you? Yeah. I think the best lending page is emilyamills.com. And from there you can find whatever else that I'm doing. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for coming on here. I am excited to do it myself and I probably won't show you for being honest, but <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye.